uh, good to have you both here. Keith, uh, I don't think you were necessarily heartened too much by the, the rally that we got, believing that maybe uh, it was not going to be a new uptrend. Uh, how does this feel to you today in terms of the reaction of stocks to what's happening in yields and expectations of the Fed? Well, first, Mike, uh, great to be with you. Uh, as far as the market reaction today, it's a sharp sell-off after a really strong rally. But we have been discussing with our clients the last few weeks in this 4,200 to 4,300 range. We thought the risk-reward was less favorable because at that point, especially as you hit the high end of this last week, you hit the high end of as far as fundamental resistance around an 18 multiple. That would be the highest multiple outside the pandemic that we've seen over the last 20 years. And then we had this confluence of technical resistance. It almost seemed too cute that we went right up to the 200-day moving average then came down. But, um, you know, as this market moved up, um, you know, you went from pricing in recession at the lows to pricing in almost no risk. And we just think that that environment is, is less favorable. And we're not too surprised by the pullback, though. It was sharper than I think anyone would have expected on a Monday at the start of the week. Well, Jim, that, that is the thing, right? I mean, even if you thought you were going to respect the, the, the rally and thought that maybe it could be somewhat consequential, you might have said we should probably pull back and, uh, and, and, and chop around a little bit, just given how much we were up in a short period of time. But I, just talk about what the market has been contending with, because as we go down the list of obvious macro pressure points, they're the same ones we've been talking about for you know, eight or nine months right now. And I just wonder where we are in the process of the market sorting all that out. I, I, I kind of agree with you, Michael, that, that um, you know, I look at the bond, I take the 10-year bond yield at 303 or the, today. It's been at this same area now for four months. I mean, the, the, the entire, uh, most of the free market yield rates have, have stopped tightening over the last four months. And, and look at over that period of time, they've been battered by hawkish Fed talk, both coming from inside the Fed and from outside the Fed. They've been battered by bad, uh, hot inflation numbers, CPI, core CPI, wages and the like. And I guess at some point, what new are we going to learn this week from the from the Fed and Jackson Hole that we that they haven't already discounted and adjusted for, if you will. Um, this is like another Fed, uh, you know, uh, meeting, uh, just an extra one with Jackson Hole. And at every Fed meeting, we tend to have pullbacks. The VIX goes up. Uh, we get pullbacks in the market. And once the meeting's over, we kind of regain footing. And I don't know if this is going to be a lot different. What I am focused on is that, um, Look, I, I think inflation's clearly headed south, and it's going to continue to do that. And um, every every time we get out a few more months, it'll be lower than it is today. And I think that's going to be more and more optimistic for stocks in general. And it's very encouraging to see the economic surprise index jump from minus 80 here at the end of last month to minus 10 today, where we're seeing some economic momentum come back, which is flattened out earnings revisions, they, they stopped going down on estimates this month after falling last month and uh, improving the, the idea that we're not near term to a recession. And if earnings hold together, inflation keeps coming down, I think I think the rally will regain footing yet uh, in the balance of this year.